Jaguars have won the AFC South. Duval! Yes, sir! We got the job done tonight. Yes, sir. It wasn't easy. It wasn't pretty, but we got the job done. Yes, sir. Jacksonville's going to the playoffs. AFC South champs, baby. Well, I'm so excited, guys, man. This is, It's been five years in the making, man. I know we had a great team with the 2017 Saxonville team, but this team is something special. Coach Doug Peterson was a spot-on hire. I said this this previous offseason. Shad Compi hired the best coach since uh, Jack Del Rio since he's been owner of the Jaguars. I'm pretty stoked, pretty excited. It wasn't the best eight-game start at two and six, but after that bye week, man, we turned it on. I know that, that Detroit loss was lopsided, but we had big wins over Baltimore, over Dallas, big win on the road in the rain and yucky situation in New York against the Jets. Got a big win against the Tex Texans. I know the win against the Texans isn't is it big, but that's the first time beating the Texans in nine tries. So that was a huge win for us, and then that losing streak. And then tonight, with the whole world watching, Jacksonville, Tennessee, rivalry nude for all the marbles in the AFC South. Yes, the Titans sat out all their players for last week's loss against the Cowboys. They wanted this opportunity because they knew it didn't hurt them last week. Derrick Henry was 100% despite the knack of hip. Josh Dodd looked pretty solid in the loss against Dallas. He has confidence going to the game. Mike Vrabel's ready. Defense is ready. Tennessee was ready. And boy, they came ready today. I ain't going to lie, for 80% of the game, the Titans had this game in the bag. They, they shut down our run, 20, 23 yards rushing. ETM was non factor the whole night. We was pretty much one dimension with the passing game. The passing game looked pretty good for the most part, except for at times Trevor was rushing big throws. We're supposed to have won this game. We supposed to have more points at 20 points. Okay, we had a couple miscues, opportunities in the first half. But at the end of the day, that j improving Jags defense made a play. Shout out to Rayshard Jenkins making the play, forcing the fumble, and then the real, I can repeat, the real Josh Allen scooped it up, took it all the way back for the game-winning score. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited, man. We're now the fishing the fourth seed in the AFC Champions of the AFC South. For the people who don't know, this is our first time beating the Tennessee Titans and sweeping them in the series since 2005. It's been 17 years the Jacks swept the Titans in a regular season series. So this is monumental for not only the franchise, but only for a series standpoint. We finally swept the Titans in this part of the century. So pretty excited. Kudos to the guys who really made this happen. This second half of the year, outside of us and the the Lions and the Steelers, man, those three teams really turned over after their bye weeks in the second half of the year. Uh, Pittsburgh still got a spot in the playoffs they're fighting for. They need the uh, Patriots to lose, the Dolphins to lose, and I believe, who's the third team? I think it's the... I forgot what the third team was, but Pittsburgh need three teams to lose tomorrow, plus they got a win as well against Cleveland. Then the, the, the Detroit Lions got to play the Packers on tomorrow. They got to beat the Packers and hope for Seattle to lose for them to make their playoff appearance once again. So kudos to those three teams who turned it around after a rough start. But what a game for Jacksonville, man. Let's go look at the, the stats and the numbers of the Jags. 20-16 victory over the Tennessee Titans to push them to 9-8. This is our first winning season since 2017. I formation mentioned Jacksonville team who went all the way to the AFC champion. And you know the rest, you know. Blake Bortles overthrew D.D. Westbrook. Stephon Gilmore swatted away. They got the football back. We're not going to forget the holding calls for Wiglin. But, yeah. So Blake Bortles, that's the game Blake Bortles outplayed Tom Brady for three and a half quarters. But that's either here or there. Blake Bortles out the lead no more. Tom Brady's out the patient no more. So, you know, we moved on. But let's go look at the numbers from today's Jacksonville Jaguars. Division ceiling victory over the tight Tennessee Titans today. The Jags win 20-16. Not many touchdowns being scored in this game. A total of, I believe, three. Uh, here's how the game started off. A 51-yard field goal by Randy Buck and they opened the drive. Cash is in 3-0 Tennessee. Jacksonville had a couple opportunities. I think Jackson was more excited to be in a situation where they're home in front of their, their crowd. They're playing on national television, and it's for the division. 
you can't get no sweet of that for your franchise that you haven't been to playoffs in five years. Your whole division on the line in front of a sellout crowd. And Jacksonville sellout hasn't been the same since in quite some time. So it was good that the Jacksonville faithful came out and supported the franchise in this monumental win tonight. But Trevor looked a little excited. The team was too excited, and they had to calm down. I think the first half, they were a little, little too juiced. And I think the second half, they really settled down. Locker room, halftime, Coach Peterson to talk to the fellas and say, hey, you know, let's go let's go out there and win this game. You know, this is this is the thing you've been asking for all year. You got to the point, you're 8-8, eight eight, you're division leader, you're home, put the, looking to put the division away, and... Boy, they answered in the second half. They held Tennessee only three uh, three points in the second half. So the defense really turned it on. The offense I was worried about for most of the part, we almost out got our game by over 100 yards. I think it was 312 to 222 in favor of Tennessee. And we were pretty one-dimensional all game. Uh, Jackson only ran the ball. Only had 14 carries for 19 yards a team. Travis Etienne was held to 17 yards, rush on seven carries. One along with seven. So, yeah, seven. his longest run was in the first half, first quarter. Okay, Trevor Lawrence, you know, he was pretty solid. You know, not the best Trevor Lawrence we see over the last four games, but he was solid enough to get the dub. He was 20 and 32, 212, averaging six yards per completion, one touchdown, no turnovers. And despite the one fumble, he had a QBR of 43.8, not the best QBR, but a quarterback rate of a 92. Okay, we'll take that. You know, sometimes not how good you play. Sometimes you got, okay, it's not, let me reiterate, it's not how good how you start the game is how you finish. And it was an ugly game. It was an ugly game for Jack's offensive standing compared to what we did over the last month and a half. But you have to win the ugly ones, especially when it's postseason time. And we have to win the ugly games. And Jackson really came out in the second half and really took it to the Titans on the defensive side. The offensive side, we still give a lot of points. We missed a lot of points. I was on the board. We had the fumble early on the first half on a stupidity play call by Coach Peterson and company. But they rebounded nicely in the second half. Was, uh, on the second drive, threw a 25-yard touchdown pass to Christian Kirk. That cut to 10-7, and then they got a field goal in the first half. 13-7. They opened the second half with a field goal to make it 16. Actually, no. We opened the second half with a field goal to make it 13-10. Then they answered with a field goal to make it 16-10. Then we answered with another field goal to make it 16-13. It was 16-13 all the way to about the later time of the full quarter. About under the five-minute mark, Tennessee was driving. And it was a third down. And Rayshon Jenkins came off the blind side, hit Josh Dodd as he was throwing, and it came out of knuckleball style. And Josh Allen was Johnny on the spot, playing in coverage, and he never had a clear lay for a touchdown. 20-16 uh, at that point, Tennessee had another chance to score an opportunity. Got it down to fourth down and long. And Josh Dobbs made a horrible read. Because if you look at the play, he had a wide open Trajan tra tra Burks on the field. But he missed it. He just missed the opportunity. And that separates what Ryan Tannehill could probably would have did in that play compared to what Josh Dobbs. No offense to what Josh Dobbs did today. He was pretty, He was for what he had worked with and what he had to work with, and being you know, on the team for going on our three weeks, he played a pretty solid game. You look at Josh Dobbs' numbers in probably his last game. I think Tennessee needs to go ahead and sign Josh Dobbs to a deal to make him either the backup quarterback or make him compete with uh, Ryan Tennessee for the start of the job. Because over the last seven years, Ryan Tennessee hasn't been the guy in Tennessee. It was all Derrick Henry. Now, great, Ryan Tennessee has some good spurts. But you have to give Teddy Hill some kind of competition. You paid him four years, $84 million guaranteed over that stretch. And he hasn't really proved himself as a perennial starting quarterback in the league. Yes, he has some okayish games. But I, I, I call, I said this two years ago, that Ryan Teddy is just a bona fide backup as a starting quarterback. He's a high, he's an overpaid backup quarterback. So, like I said, you know, I think Josh Dodd deserves a spot on the Titans roster. Over the last two games, he played the best he could with the with the uh, with the things he had. He was eighteen. He was twenty and twenty nine. Very efficient numbers. One seventy nine. One touchdown in the pit to Tyson Campbell, uh, and then the fumble. I mean, it, it was a blind side. He couldn't see that coming. So I think he could either throw it away or try to run for a first down, but. Needs to say, it was a good value effort for Josh Dobbs. I give him an A for effort. But today was a day for Jag. Jag Nation to finally res, uh, rejoice and say, finally, we're back in the playoffs. 
Big numbers on the day for Jackson. The Derrick Henry had a pretty good game. His job was to continue to build. They knew the Jaguars coming into the game was going to load the box on Derrick Henry. And we did that. And we had a force. We, our goal was to make Josh Dobb beat us. And yet he did that for most of the game. He played. He threw the ball very accurately. He threw the ball to open men. He made plays with his feet. But Derrick Henry was, for my, for my standing, 30 carries for 109 yards, 3 yards per carry. That's containing Derrick Henry to the best way Jacksonville can. Because this man has run a ruck shot over Jacksonville since he's been as a starter. So holding him to three yards per carry, that's a win for Jacksonville. Okay, he had no touchdowns. His longest run was 14 yards. 30 carries for 109 yards. We'll take that. You know, as Jacksonville fans, you got to be grateful that they're here to run for 200 yards or 150 or like 15 carries. You limit him to like three, four yards a pop. He has, he wasn't very as effective as he usually is over, over years against Jacksonville. So 30, uh, five, uh, 30 carries, 109 yards for Dick Henry. Josh Dodd, five for 32. They ran for a team, 39 carries for 147 yards. They clearly outran the Jaguars on tonight. But Trevor Lawrence did make some good plays through the air. Christian Kirk was our leading receiver with six catches for 99 yards. And that 25-yard touchdown catch uh, in the first half was critical. And then Marvin Jones, 2 for 29. Evan Ingram, 4 for 27. Zay Jones, 4 for 21. Trevor Etienne, 2 for 17. And Luke Farrell, 1 for 11. And Jamal Agnew, 1 for 8. You look at the defensive. Uh, of course, Trevor Lawrence did lose a fumble. Right but outside that, he played clean football. Clean football game for Trevor Lawrence, and he was only sat once. So outside the fumble, the one sat, Trevor Lawrence played a very good game. Could have been a little bit better, but we'll take the dub the way we could get it. On defense, my boy, uh, Alo oh, I could never say this man's name right. For you say that, a local 13 tackles on the day, including the sack. They had Darius Williams, eight tackles. Chad Mooma, seven tackles, win a tackle for loss. Rayshon Jenkins with a critical force fumble. He had seven tackles. Corey Peters with seven tackles along with a half a sack and two tackles for loss. Josh Allen finished with seven six tackles, including the game-winning scoop and score for the Jags. Excuse me, Davon Hamilton with six tackles. Tyson Campbell, five tackles with the pick. Uh, who also had a sack. Andre Cisco had a pretty good game with five tackles. Trayvon Walker with four tackles and a tackle for loss. Adam Gotis had half a sack. Roy Robertson Harris had a sack. Uh, so we have four sacks on the day. Uh, Tyson Campbell had the only pick for the day for Jacksonville. Randy back 29 yards. So you look at the stats as a team. Let's look at team stats. Jacksonville dig out game 312 to 222. Jacks, uh, Tennessee definitely destroyed Jacksonville to come to time of possession. They had the ball for, let's get time of possession. If I can find it. 36 12 to 23 48. They also ran the ball, had the ball for 74 plays compared to Jacksonville 47. So they had ball, almost 30 more plays in Jacksonville. Outgained them almost 100 yards. But they still could get the job done. Tennessee had up, plenty of opportunities to win this game. Jacksonville, so did Jacksonville. But Jacksonville defense made the plays necessary to win the game. Despite being out game, had the ball for the least amount of time, ran less amount of plays, got out ran, but they still got the job done. So kudos to Jacksonville on the win, guys. They're now 9-8, first winning season in five years. We're going to the playoffs. We're going to the playoffs. That's right. The Jacksonville Jaguars, who started 2-6, and six, is going to the postseason. Shout out Tennessee for a good game. A very hard-fought rivalry game. They fall to 7-10. It's going to be a long offseason for Tennessee fans. Finishing with a franchise worth seven-game losing streak after starting the season 7-3. What is going to happen to Mike Vrabel going to next year? Do they need a new direction at head coach? Do they need a new direction at OC? Do they need uh? They need, need a new quarterback because Ryan Tannehill, I think he'll be a free agent coming up soon. So do they pay Ryan Tannehill? Do they try to groom Elite Woods to be a franchise quarterback? Or do they give Josh Dunn somebody else a chance? So congratulations to my Jaguars. Big win, 20-16. to 16. I appreciate everybody who did this video today, guys. Hit that like and subscribe button for more. We're on the road to 500. I'm going to put...
a link in the description for you down below, a free 30-day free trial to Amazon Prime and Amazon Prime Video. Link will be in the description down below, so click that and enjoy that. From behalf of me and everybody at my channel, I appreciate it, guys. Have a blessed and safe Saturday morning, cause Sunday morning, because now Sunday morning on the East Coast. For wherever you at, y'all have a blessed and joyful Sunday, guys. Dude.